morning everybody and it's a really good morning purely because we get to talk about fishing again very simple now guys this week what I want to discuss is a very effective what we call the Transkai Cobb Trace very effective what the locals use there a lot the gillies and everybody have used it all over the years and there's a couple of reasons why it's effective the movement of the bait the elongated shape they use and a bit of foam for extra movement in the water and it's all for those cob up to 10 kilos the shoaling cob and moving in between the banks this is a fantastic bait it creates a lot of vibration in the water that attracts cob because of their lateral line they hunt predominantly on vibrations in the water and movement and this bait moves a lot creates a lot of vibration a really nice general bait you won't only catch cob on it, Steambrus won't leave it alone, Granta won't leave it alone and many other edible species will grab and gulp up this bait quite easily. So let's start with the trace. I'm using a standard cob trace or edible trace if you can call it that. A 6.0 ringed soy which I tie to 0 .6, 0.6.70. My recommendation is something like Kingfisher because there's a lot of movement in this line. It's nice and soft, it just assists in the movement of your bait. All right, so that's a 0.6 millimeter or a 0.7. You can fish anywhere there. And then slightly lighter for my sinker line, a 0.55. Also the same. And then I really like the mustard clip-on, sinker clip-ons, which you buy and you tie that to your sinker line. It makes it easy to pack it up. And to attach a sinker, you'll just hook it through, put it on, and you can also clip it onto your hook to cast further. All right, so it gives you the best of both. Choice of sinker, it really depends on where you fish. You can use a bottle sinker if the sea is not too rough and you're fishing in, in between broken reef. Um, on sand, you would use this if the sea is not too rough and you can even switch to a grapnel sinker. If you're using a circle hook, I wouldn't use a grapnel sinker unless really a necessity because of how strong the sea is. But uh, a grapnel sinker does assist in setting these chemically sharpened hooks. Like the mustard ring soy, very, very sharp hook. And that grapnel getting stuck in the sand and even the cone to a certain extent when that fish picks it up and swims away it just gives it a, a, enough pressure that initial pressure to set this point into its mouth and you just secure it by striking it all right guys very simple another important thing lately which we use is the combi swimble, swivels it's a, a, a power swivel and it's a combination in this case a five by six which gives you the extra swivel that swivels around there just preventing tangling up your sinker or your hook line goes on to the main bigger swivel your main line on the top eye and the additional little little swivel I've got there is for my sinker line that allows that movement so it doesn't wrap up as much very very effective then as you can see what I've done here is I put a toothpick already through and that's to secure the foam I'm going to use and secure my bait. So when you clip, uh, for the guys that don't know, when you clip, this is what we mean when we refer to clipping your bait and that's to cast much further. When you do that and you don't secure your bait or your foam, it will shoot up the line. So your bait sits up top here, your hook's hanging in the bottom and there's no way you're going to catch a fish on that. So it's very important to secure the foam and your bait accordingly. For this particular bait, we'll use the white foam. This is Kingfisher, the white uh, sleeves you get um, at most tackle stores available. And we're gonna cut a full length piece. And again, guys, my bratty mustard knife. <laughs> I see there's a couple of guys that ask where they can get it. Uh, unfortunately, the, the queries come from overseas, I don't know to answer you where you're going to get it overseas but it is available at Kingfisher if you want to do a mail order and I don't know which other tackle stores in South Africa keeps it. All right now I'm just going to taper it slightly the last half just taper it up a bit and then at the bottom end just going to round it off nicely and that's it that's what I'm going to use. Okay all right let's get myself organized Latex cotton, in this case it's a thick, uh, for this bait I would use a medium. The medium to light makes very neat baits. The thick we mainly use for shark baits and bigger baits. Alright. Okay. So 
So your foam, measure it to there. I'll stick the toothpick in and it's on the back of your hook. All right. And then we're just gonna tie it up. And the foam you can tie up properly. What I like doing around the toothpick is do it 45, 45, like you can see they're forming an X. And that's just to make sure it's very, very secure because that's what's gonna hold the bait and prevent it from shooting up the line. Now gentlemen and ladies, you can put a lot more cotton than what I just did, just to secure it properly, and you can play with the length of this. You can make it slightly shorter and that's the body of your bait. Nice fresh Atkin Marine Chocker. This is actually what I used this weekend. So I defrosted it quickly. Well, I took it with, never got used. All right, and just as a reminder to clean your chocker, you stick your fingers in there, you grab it, you pull the skin off, off, like that, undressing the baby. Then we've got the whole chocker, and then you see these kind of its spine, it's a cartilage, almost, it sits at the bottom. That's where I prefer cutting my, my chocker, right on that cartilage. Open it up. Look at that. Take all the insides out. Chuck it in the water there. Nice. Now, for the purpose of a clean bait demo, I'm just going to wash the ink off, but you don't have to. That ink forms a very good smell in the water. And that's our chocker. Old skirt the piece we mainly use for fishing. Now how this bait works, very simple. That's the piece I'm gonna need. I'm gonna trim it up top here. Then you're going to measure, and that's basically where it's going to come to. I'm going to split those in two, and that's going to be your tentacles. So that's basically what you've got. Very nice, long, thin bait. It's almost too much here, so I'm just going to trim it a bit, because after beating it, it gets even bigger. and then you take your chocker hammer. Now important guys, the inside of your chocker you put to the bottom and that assists in mushing it up properly. And then you take the chocker, the mushed up area underneath, you're gonna put outwards. You're gonna secure your hook right there. Take the toothpick through. And you can trim that toothpick if you really want to. Wrap it nicely with your hand. And then just cotton it up. Now, how this works, guys, the cobble just gulp it up. They're not gonna pick pick at it. They'll gulp this whole bait. One shot, pull your flat. Nothing wrong with that. There you go. A very long bait, as you can see. Gives it very nice movement. I made it slightly bigger. You can make it thinner. So your skirts can be off this thickness. And this as well, you can make it a bit thinner if you want. A long, thin bait. For the purpose of demonstration, I made it nice and thick. In any case, this will be a 10 kilo carb, okay? Not a three kilo carb, the one that eats this. But that's the very popular carb bait for TransKai and will work anywhere in South Africa, really, if you ask me. But this is what the guys have been using a lot in the TransKai. For many years, since I can remember, um, for the last 20 years, I've seen them use this bait and I've myself caught a lot of carb on this.